this is Maria Rieger, your resident Gemini and host of Positive Parenting with Astrology. And today we have another video on parenting and astrology. Today we're doing something a little different. We're talking about what the Johnny Depp trial teaches us about childhood abuse and childhood trauma. As most of us have probably heard, Johnny Depp is suing his ex-wife Amber Heard for defamation, actually in a... Uh, in a court uh, in the state in which I live. So that's kind of interesting. He's not too far from us. Um, now, you may not care too much about celebrity news and celebrity gossip, and I don't either. However, what I want to focus on is how the testimony of this trial informs our thinking about childhood abuse and trauma, and especially how when those children grow up into adults, they kind of carry that with them and through their healing. I don't want to make any legal conclusions about the trial, although of course I have my own uh, opinion, especially since uh, as an attorney is my day job, but I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about what, how, what the testimony, how it informs us about how we think about childhood trauma. So if the testimony and evidence of the trial teach us anything, it's that the effects of childhood abuse and childhood trauma are deep, long lasting, profound and they affect everyone. It doesn't matter how many resources you have or what your income level is or your education level is, they affect everyone. So to hear more about this, keep watching. Now I have deep empathy for Johnny Depp. Now, I did grow up with his shows, but that's not why I have empathy for him. I have empathy for him because he reportedly was an abused child. He was the youngest of four kids and his mother was reportedly physically and emotionally abusive to him. And as explained publicly, when the person who is most supposed to love you and support you is cruel to you, that is very damaging. I'm paraphrasing his words, but that is very damaging because then you grow up thinking that that is correlated with love and affection. That's clearly not the case. Now, Johnny was reportedly kicked out of the house at about age 17. Now, supposedly his father was in the house too. And his father, while he was not abusive, he didn't really do much to stop the abuse from the mom. The father pretty much felt powerless. And we see that this dynamic a lot, unfortunately. If the other parent is not necessarily enabling the abusive parent, a lot of the times they just fail to act and fail to advocate for the kids and stand up for the kids. Sometimes it's because they're afraid of a divorce and they're afraid that they're just not gonna see the kids or have access to the kids. And that's unfortunate. That dynamic teaches the child that the abuse is somehow okay or sanctioned by the other parent. And that's obviously not something that we want to convey to kids. Now, Johnny Depp has also indicated that he understands that his mother herself was an abused child and that that is why she has carried on those abusive tendencies. Now that does not excuse the abuse, of course, but we can understand why the person is abusive without forgiving them or sanctioning it or approving of their behavior. However, adults are responsible for their own healing. Even adults who were abused children, I don't excuse adults for who don't heal for continuing those patterns of abuse. But what Johnny is talking about are those patterns of generational trauma and abuse that we address on this channel from time to time, that they are often just carried through the generations until somebody like us says, no, we are not going to do this anymore. We are not going to treat our kids as we were treated. And that's a very powerful thing. And that's essentially what Johnny Depp is doing, breaking that cycle of generational abuse and refusing to treat his children how he was treated. And of course, by healing, we become better parents and better partners. So interestingly, Johnny Depp has a Gemini sun and a Capricorn moon. And if you watch his channel, you know that yours truly also has a Gemini sun and a Capricorn moon. So the Gemini energy compels the chart holder to communicate and to interact with other people and be social. However, the Capricorn moon energy is highly introverted. So it appears that for everything I see about Johnny, that he is an introvert. That may sound weird because he was very much in the news when he was younger. Uh, he hung out with a whole bunch of people. He owned the Viper Room in Hollywood for a while and obviously hosted parties there all the time. But just because he likes to hang out with people doesn't mean that he doesn't need his alone time. See, introverts are not antisocial. Being an introvert does not mean that you don't enjoy people's company. We very much do enjoy people's company. But being an introvert means that you need alone time to recharge your energy, recharge your thoughts, 
and you're very internally focused. You don't need as much external stimulation as extroverts. And that appears to be the case for Johnny. If you listen to him talk, he spends a lot of time like alone reading and he appears to buffer those periods of heavy social activity with kind of rest and relaxation and alone time. More so as you get older because you need the rest, obviously. But his Capricorn moon is definitely consistent with that. So also being a Capricorn moon, as a child, he needed a lot of stability and structure. Now all kids need stability and structure, some more than others. Aries moon children need that maybe to a lesser degree than Earth moon children. But my point is Capricorn moon kids need to know what's coming next. They need to know what to expect in the household and the relationship with the parents. They need structure, stability. They need more of a routine. So he obviously does not appear to have gotten any of that, okay? He probably walked on eggshells with his mom. He was afraid of making her angry. He was afraid of being abused. He was afraid of setting her off. And that's a horrible way to live, okay? The, also, the Capricorn energy most likely made him feel very dutiful and loyal toward the family. Probably also made him feel very responsible. He probably felt responsible for his mother's emotional states. That's parentifying a child. It's wrong. It's an unhealthy parent-child dynamic. But you see that in his adult life. He appears to be an extreme people pleaser and appears to be concerned with what other people think of him. And that's all rooted in his childhood. He also, as a Capricorn moon, likely felt very burdened by what was happening at home and likely felt that part of it was his fault. And Capricorn moon people are also incredibly loyal. So if he found himself as an adult in, in relationships that were abusive to him, the Capricorn moon energy may explain why he stayed in the relationship because he felt some loyalty toward the relationship or because he felt some some fault or guilt in what was happening to him in the relationship that is would have all been rooted in his childhood now on a positive note he appears to have really been good at breaking that pattern of generational abuse with his own children he is quoted to have said that he vowed never to treat his children as he was treated that he was going to shower his children with love he was going to constantly tell them that he loved them he was going to give them gifts big gifts for Christmas and things like that. And he was going to make sure they knew they were loved unconditionally. And that is reportedly how he was with his kids, that he showered them with attention and affection. So he was very good, did a good job of breaking that generational trauma, that cycle. And the Gemini sun energy, that air energy gives the chart holder the detachment necessary to do that. We've talked in other videos about Gemini and Aquarius people as being able to step outside of themselves and look and be in the shoes of the other person. That energy helps the chart holder to do that. So here you have a very loyal individual, Capricorn Moon, who is able to be analytical, Gemini Sun. And if you're interested in further information about how to parent your Gemini kids, you can check out my playlist on how to parent your Gemini child. And you can check out my book, Your Gemini Child, which is available at uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble and Kobo and as an audiobook on Audible. Now, from the look of it, Johnny Depp has been working on his own healing his entire life. He's been healing himself while learning how to be the best parent possible for his kids, which is what almost everybody watching this channel is doing. Now, we know that when we experience abuse and trauma as children, we have the tendency to kind of act out those dynamics in our adult life until we are detached enough to realize how harmful that is and to stop that behavior. So for example, Johnny Stir reportedly said that when their mother was abusive to him, he would kind of run and hide, right? So some of the testimony in the current trial indicated that he would do the same with his ex-wife. He would run and hide. Now, obviously it's a good thing to take yourself out physically out of away from a situation that is abusive or explosive, right? But he definitely, so that's a good thing, but he definitely carried on that tendency. And it would not surprise me if maybe in prior more healthy relationships with healthier partners, he possibly had the tendency to withdraw rather than engage and communicate because Capricorn moon is, is not a comfortable position for your emotions. The moon is ruled by cancer. Capricorn is the opposite side of cancer. So the moon is said to be in detriment in Capricorn and Capricorn is a very reserved, stoic, private sign. So Capricorn moon people tend to withdraw more so than talk or address emotional issues head on. So while I don't know for sure, it would not surprise me if he had that tendency in some of his healthier relationships. 
as, as we kind of mentioned earlier, Johnny does seem to have been an extreme people pleaser in his adult life, always wanting to make sure that people liked him. And of course, he's always seeking the attention and affection of other people, especially from women, because he did not get that from his mother. Now, being an extreme people pleaser and having poor boundaries is a very troubling thing because a lot of people don't have our best interests at heart. So if we don't self-champion and don't voice our wants and needs and always placate the other person, we run the risk of being very unhappy and unfulfilled. We have to speak up for ourselves. And of course, a person in Johnny's position as an adult may have the tendency to equate love with abuse, either emotional abuse or physical abuse. And obviously that's very unhealthy. So you have to really detach and work on yourself to realize that you are worthy of much better treatment. Now, it appears that Johnny Depp has been working on this healing journey his entire life. It also appears that he has sought out uh, substances, drugs and alcohol to self-soothe and self-medicate um, some of the issues associated with his childhood trauma. Right. And he's been off off and on drugs and alcohol almost his entire life in and out of rehab. That's very common. Uh, abused children, uh, when they grow up um, into adolescents, teenagers, adults, often self-medicate just because dealing with the abuse, kind of being self-aware of the abuse is just so painful. It's not the only way to deal with it. It's not the only unhealthy way to deal with it. If you're like me, you overachieved because if you overachieved and got, you know, made enough money and got the right kind of job and bought the right kind of house and had the right kind of material possessions, then people would accept you. People would give you attention and affection and people would think you were worthy. Well, my message to you is that you are worthy because you are a human being and you are a soul, period, the end. It doesn't matter what your education level is. It doesn't matter what your income level is. It doesn't matter what you have accomplished with your life. It doesn't matter. You are worthy, period, the end. You don't have to overachieve or achieve at all to be worthy of love, healthy relationships, and abundance in all areas of, of your life. So that is my message to you. So people like me who tended to be more, you know, overachieving, and that is how they dealt with the effects of childhood trauma, obviously that can lead to being a workaholic and ignoring other more important areas of your life, such as your relationships, your relationships with your partner, with your children, taking care of yourself, feeding your soul, all those things. You may also say yes all the time, yes to volunteering, yes to this other project, yes to this other job, you know, because you're afraid to say no, or you were taught that you had no right to say no to things. You had to say yes to everything. And that was me. I would be completely overwhelmed because I would say yes to everything. And then when I failed to deliver on things, people would get angry, right? because I failed to deliver, because I had said yes to everything, because I felt like I had to. You don't, you can say no, you deserve the right to rest, okay? You deserve the right to rest because you're a human being. So to sum up, Johnny Depp has done a lot of work on himself. He's been in and out of rehab, he's done a lot of healing work, okay? And his Gemini sun energy gives him the detachment necessary to do that and step away from the abuse and separate himself and how he treats others from the abuse he suffered. And that's a very powerful thing. And we all have the power to do that, to heal. So here's the big main kind of all important, all encompassing message I would like to share with you is that even someone like Johnny Depp, who has every resource at his disposal, he has the best medication. He has the best physicians, the best treatment team. He has all the good therapists. He can do inpatient treatment, right? All these things, even someone with every resource at their disposal, struggles with healing from childhood trauma and childhood abuse. It is a long, lonely, grueling road, okay? A lot of people don't understand it because they don't understand how parents could be abusive to kids because they were lucky and had good parents. It is a long, lonely, grueling road. And even someone with Johnny Depp's income level and all his resources struggles and goes in and out of rehab and chooses unhealthy relationships. So if you are doing this healing work like I am, I want you to take a moment and be really proud of yourself for doing this because it is hard and more than likely you do not have all the resources available that somebody like Johnny Depp does. Even someone well-loved and well-respected like him struggles with self-esteem, struggles with low self-worth. You're not the only one if you struggle, if you do struggle with those issues, you are not the only one. And even he is caused to act out in unhealthy ways as an adult because of his childhood trauma. 
even though he has every treatment resource at his disposal. When we're talking about healing from childhood trauma, part of it is we're talking about using the brain's penchant for neuroplasticity. We're retraining our brain from, from childhood triggers and things like that. That is a long process. It's not an overnight process. Johnny Depp's in his 50s has been doing this probably most of his adult life. And it's a long process. So be very proud of yourself for doing this healing work so that you can heal and be the best parent possible to your kids. Your kids are very lucky to have a parent like you who is doing that because it is not easy. So that's what I want you to do today. I want you to really take a few moments and think about how far you have come, be proud of yourself, and then I want you to take an hour and do something that makes you feel good. Do something that you enjoy. That is your homework, okay? So that's all for today. We'll be back soon, and thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next video. Take care.